tonight from Oklahoma City. It's week four of the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Oklahoma City Nighthawks taking on San Diego. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle with their opponents. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top player. Three and zero versus zero and three. Will current form hold? We'll find out as we're off in Week Four. Now the return. Here comes Randall Cobb. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by the number one overall pick back in 2020 from LSU. It's Joe Burrow. So when I reviewed last week's game and saw the four touchdown passes that he threw, I thought about you during the Turkey Bowl last year. Yeah, you guys right. had the same stats, except go. he got the NFC Offensive Player of the Week award with his. Uh, he got touchdowns. I got picks. <laughs> I like going back watching the film with you, and we thought it was a good performance in person. Obviously, it was, but you thought even better on tape. It was it was really something to watch. Yeah, what I loved was how he spread it around. A lot of people involved in the passing offense. Four touchdown passes culminated it. Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. They will throw on first down with Burrow. And he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Not much there, only a yard. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored, give yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. But I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. He'll get this underneath to Edmonds. And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved. Just as you said, they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to put it away. 
And this one's going toward the sideline. They'll try to play keep away from Beckham. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia. It's Geno Smith. And it's funny how we always talk about how analytics are starting to creep into the game. One analytic that's been there for a long time, teams that start 0-3 usually don't make the playoffs. So we know one quarterback today that's determined to end that slide right now. It's not impossible, but this is a must win for him and his team. Flush to his right. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Throwing now is Geno. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. On first down, it's Smith. Henry brings it in. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Gino now to throw. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. A gain of six there on first. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, Got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the second down. On second down, it's Patterson, and he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. And that'll set him back five. Well, that's a tough, costly penalty because now it makes it third and six after the false start. From the gun, here's Smith. And caught by Henry. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. So first possession, fourth and short. Field goal's no gimme from here. What do you think about going for it? I'm not just thinking about it. I'm signaling, go for it. Let's huh? get this, okay. all right? Yeah, look, you're right. You know, the field goal's there, but it's not a chip shot. My big thing is opening drive. You're trying to establish momentum. Let's not stall it ourselves. Let's go get this first down and then just continue on downfield and try and get a touchdown. I think you're kind of for this. Yeah, why not? Let's go. On first down. It's Patterson, and he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Two yards the loss, second and 12. So add that tackle for a loss to the two that he had a week ago. And you know what he's doing right now? Smiling? Yeah, definitely doing that. <laughs> but he's also patting his guys on the back, his defensive front, because they're keeping him clean, meaning no one's getting to him as a blocker. He's able to run to the football, and the plays he's making, he's spilling them in the offensive backfield. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. A shotgun handoff to Patterson. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. Well, this defense very strong in that victory from a week ago. But well, we certainly had a nice conversation with the defensive coordinator, didn't we? And what we heard, I like what we did, but we definitely need more pressure on the quarterback this week. Throwing on third down, Smith. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. And his kick is good. And that will break our tie and give him a three-point lead. 
Ku just hit the field goal. Now he kicks off. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Back onto the field comes this offense ready for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Well, look there at his numbers on the ground a week ago. Pretty good as he found himself in the end zone on two separate occasions. And those are the most important numbers because no matter what you pile up prior to the goal line, getting in is all that matters. Putting those numbers up on the board, and they love them when they're sixes. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They're passing here. Joe Burrow hats out to the flat for Edmonds. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Second and two. To Edmonds on the toss. And he stopped immediately there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Now Burrow. It's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll kick it away for the second time. there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and ten. They're going to start to drive here on the ground with Patterson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. The numbers for him from a week ago, 18 carries, 109 yards. And the way they ran the ball in last week's game has to be satisfying to their entire staff because they're seeing not just a back gain big yardage, but they're seeing an offensive line really in sync. On second down now. It's Patterson, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. Now Gino. No chance to get away there for Smith as he goes down. Pass rusher extraordinaire, D Ford that time, getting the sack. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Oh, good agility by Cobb. So holding there on the return, and that'll back him up to start the next drive. Yeah, that's a pretty easy call right there, partner. I think when the officials look in their manual and see the expression, jersey getting pulled, that's a flag coming out every time. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. 
Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. First and ten, Joe Burrow. They'll go out to the flat for Edmonds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. On second down, this is Edmonds. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now it's Burrow. He's got Smith here. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Looking to throw again on second down. Burrow. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get touchdown. It's complete. Trey McKinney, his first touchdown on the year. And the Nighthawks have taken the lead. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. So here are visitors to take over on offense. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. On second down. It's Patterson, and he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. They went counter there offensively, and a couple of the defenders were on skates for a second. They certainly were, and you know what offensive linemen love about the counters and the misdirections? Sometimes you don't even have to block the defender. He can run himself out of the play if he doesn't read his keys properly. Now Gino on first down. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10, as they've got things rolling on this drive. They run with Patterson, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Patterson on the draw play. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here.
So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A shotgun snap for Smith. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Here's Patterson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. 41 yards rushing for him now to this point. The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. They're up against a third and one situation. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. They'll run on first down. It's Patterson, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Off of play action, here's Smith. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and 10. Out of the gun, Smith. He'll get this to Coleman. And they'll get to him short of the first down at about the 16. That'll give him eight that time. And that's going to make it fourth down. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. On fourth down, Smith. Open man Lamb, it's complete. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. They'll try to run this one in. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. From the two now, second and goal. Now Smith, and it's caught. Touchdown! His first touchdown on the year. And the Aftershocks have retaken the lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Now the try here for the point after. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Here comes Cobb. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six of six, touchdown pass, so whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate, the receivers catch it, the ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, the ball never hits the ground there either. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Burrow on play action. It's incomplete, took a shot, couldn't connect. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From midfield now, Burrow, it gets it over the middle to Cobb. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Burrow on third down. They'll get this to his running back, Edmonds. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Burrow. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Cobb. 
Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. From the 29, Burrow. That's complete to Edmonds, his running back. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Catch made here by Campbell. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. On third down, Burrow. And it's caught. Touchdown. Randall Cobb in the final seconds of the first half. And the Nighthawks have yet again retaken the lead. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Boswell good with the extra point. And the lead is now 14 to 10. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. No reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we send John over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. All right, folks eager to get back to this week four matchup. We won't put up a fight. So a four-point game here as we get set to resume action in this third quarter of play. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. And this offense set to go now to begin the third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Patterson on the carry. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Smith. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Thirty-three yards is the distance on the punt there. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? 
I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. down. Here's Burrow. He's got his tight end McKinney right side complete. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. To the air again. Burrow. Caught by Kyle. That catch for his career is number 731, and that's the number that Calvin Johnson ended with when he stopped his career in 2016. Yeah, what could have been for him. So maybe now what we'll see is someone else continue to elevate their game and put this number well in his rearview mirror. I think 800, not out of line here. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Out of the gun, it's Burrow, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at about the 31, the 30, 10, and he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, I think we all know the turnovers have a way of deciding games, and before you say something snarky, I realize that's not particularly astute. But in this case, how about the evidence right here in the third quarter? They've got the lead, moving the football, things looking good, and then... Yeah, so now a flip on the scoreboard with that pick six, and I don't know, the rest of this second half shaping up to be very interesting. Coup for the extra point. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Williams now on the return. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. And he's probably wondering, how do I get that mojo back from the first half that he seems to have lost a little bit here in the third quarter? And every guy has his whisperer on the team. You know, that one guy who can say things to him that other people can't. Right now, he's looking for that guy to go, hey, we're good, we're good. One interception, just get it back, get back to being who you are, and this team will be okay. Yeah, because they let it halftime, trailing now. Play action, it's Burrow. Open man, here's Cobb. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes, because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Burrow will throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. On second down now, Edmonds. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. I think this running game, or should I say lack of one, is making this defense look better than what they really are.
from the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And that is incomplete. The coverage good that time by Kendall Fuller. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on here to punt it away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. And spotted at the 14-yard line. Our visitors getting set to take over on offense. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Once more, they turn to Patterson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Here's Smith. Got a man, it's Patterson complete. And they're gonna get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough, and now fourth down. Got that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch, I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's fallen off. When a team is struggling, sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that's always a big one, isn't it? Usually, there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, Get with him and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So there's one person he can lean on. He's going to have to lean on that guy right now. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give him a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Edmonds. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. Now Burrow on first down. He's got his tight end over the middle. That's McKitty. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Powers through it. the 32 now. Here's first and 10. They go play action with Burrow. That's complete and once again it's Cobb. Three yards the game there. Second down. Off the play fake. Here's Burrow. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. 
Now it's Burrow. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Boswell's kick is good, and that will tie things at 17 all. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right, as he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in and have just enough to get it done. So here are visitors to take over on offense, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now those are the ones that hurt defensively. You do everything right. Excellent pressure, good coverage downfield, and then he slips out the back door and turns it into a nice game. down Patterson and down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine and there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps you don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon they'll keep it on the ground it's Patterson and this time he's able to take it down to the 42 but they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. They'll run on first down. Patterson. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Gino out to throw. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. Give him five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. From the gun, here's Smith. And he finds his target, Ebron. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, Smith. He finds his target, Beckham. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. This one left side caught by Patterson. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Throwing again is Smith. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. 
So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. And this one is right through. And with that, they take the lead here 20 to 17. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Charles, this one, not over, certainly, but you set the magic number earlier in this game at 20 points, said that they would need to hold them right around that marker under it. And what, what are you seeing here? Well, that, that number is still in play because we said, okay, 20 or under gives them a chance to win. Right on pace for being in that range. And guess what? They've got a shot. They will throw on first down with Burrow. That's taken in by the tight end, McKitty. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Now Burrow. He's got McKinney complete to his tight end. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he fires one, but incomplete. Here's Johnny Hacker now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25. It will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Our visitors getting set to take over on offense. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Now Gino on first down. It's caught by OBJ. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. On the option, it's Smith himself. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Throwing now is Geno. Short little throw to Ebron. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Play action. It's Smith. He completes it to Beckham. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. A shotgun snap for Smith, and caught by Henry. Three yards the gain there, second down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. 
They'll keep it on the ground. It's Patterson, and this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. On fourth down, they'll try and run for it. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. On first down, Patterson. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. On third down, it's Patterson. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, They've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They go down to a knee and a sigh of relief as they are into the win column for the first time this year. So this crowd will not go home happy. It's a victory for our visitors, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big time performance down the stretch. So for our visitors, it took a few weeks, but they finally get their first one of the season here in week four. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Cleveland to take on the Browns. Meanwhile, for the home team here, the defeat is their first of the year as they drop to three and one. And they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.